unicorn today. I watch the fireflies light up the Milky Way, and all the prayers that go unanswered seem to find a place to stay. And still we pray. And as the hands of time reach out. Do that again. What was that? No, I, I want something majestic. You do realize I know people in high places. Oh, how do you do, Mort? Mm. Uh, you do know we have guests waiting. Uh, I didn't hear. Uh, uh, forgive me. So I was just reading this book which talks about the power of music and its history. Fascinating. Welcome to the Inn of Small Miracles, where everyone should have their own theme music. Yes, you see, that gets me back to this book. Hmm. It says here that everyone does have their own theme song. So does a rock. You know, the music of the spheres, etc., etc., etc. This human is my dear husband, Mort. <laughs> Uh, Mort, perhaps our guests you hear something other than the theme of the rock. Yeah, but you see, it's the same for everyone. Wherever they go, whatever they experience. I mean, when I go outside and just sit down and quiet my mind and just stare at a rock, I do hear the music. And so can anyone, if they want to. And all of you, my dear friends, are here because each one of you, somewhere in your soul, wants to experience the music. The miracle. Finally, he gets to the point. Miracles. Occurrences beyond nature. Mort and I have the merit to be caretakers of this humble inn of the miracles. Well, you won't find us on your GPS or road map. You can send a drone looking for us and our inn will never show up. Oh, but please, make yourselves comfortable. Sit, stretch, spread out, however you're most relaxed. If you like music. The year is 1862. The American Civil War is raging. By war's end, 850,000 human beings will die. And in 1862, the war is at its height. That's Union Army Captain Robert Ellicombe. He's wide awake after a day of bloody combat. The Confederate troops are camped just past a strip of land and over a hill. Captain Ellicombe is trying to decide if he should get his men out of this death valley or mount a head-on attack on the Rebs. Ellicombe never asked to be in charge of so many human lives, never cared about being a captain. He had a family at home up north, a business. Were these the desperate pleas of a Yankee or a Confederate? Did that matter? Not to Captain Ellicombe. He could no longer take another human suffering, even if it meant putting his own life at stake.
No! Oh, God, do you hear me? No, no, not him! Not him! this no no don't stop was I playing too loud not at all not at all this piece of mail directed to you ended up in my pile it says it's from Atlanta Atlanta? What's in Atlanta besides the genteel savages rattling their swords as they treat other human beings worse than dogs? I've been accepted. To what? The Atlanta Conservatory of Music. That's wonderful. Congratulations, my boy. I'm not surprised. I thought I was horrible at that audition. Oh. The Atlanta Conservatory? D do you know what this means? It means you'll get into Harvard or Yale. Well, not for music, no. In Atlanta, I'll be playing with some of the finest musicians in the world. Have you been paying attention to what's going on down there? Georgia's on the verge of seceding with the rest of the South. Not at the conservatory. I'll be with all musicians. Viola players, father. Piccolo virtuosos. These are not sword rattlers, nor negro beaters. It's been rarely a human I've ever met that doesn't have a dark side, my boy. Even a piccolo player. It's simply not safe down there right now. Maybe that'll change soon, and then... They want me now, though. It's funny. I thought I was speaking. I'm sorry, sir. I was speaking nonsense. It's only going to get worse down there, son. I know what this means to you, but I cannot, in good conscience, allow my only son to travel into a snake pit. I, I promise I will stay safe. Your mother... Will... I will write twice a week, and if there's any sign of trouble where I am, I will get on the first train home. Do you want these genteel savages to bully us so they ruin your son's life as well? Besides, I come from pretty stiff stock, you know? <laughs> and you've inherited a silver tongue from someone as well. <laughs> Father... In three years, I could be playing with the Philadelphia Symphony. Three years? In three years, our nation may be unrecognizable. Couldn't Mr. Lincoln help change things? Thank the good Lord he was elected, but no man is more loathed in the rebel states than he. Perhaps you're right, William. You are an artist. And obviously a very talented one. I didn't need anyone from Atlanta to tell me that. I'm also a man. You are a man, yes. But the most successful men in the world listen and take advice. Sometimes from other men who maybe have had more experience. I've than heard me. everything you said and take it to heart. And I hope you're doing the same. I will speak to your mother about this. I can earn your blessings. You always have my blessings. <laughs> I will compose for you and mother a most memorable piece. 
I'm going to hold you to that one. So, William Billy Ellicum went south to study music at the Atlantic Conservatory. Then, as the elder Ellicum expected, war exploded, cutting the country in half. The last note the Ellicums received from their son, much to their shock and dismay, was to inform them that he had enlisted in the Confederate Army. It was exceedingly difficult, if not impossible, for families caught now on different sides to communicate with one another during this time. Now, Robert Ellicum had not heard from his son for a very long time, but he always prayed for his safety. As the months passed, with no word from Billy, Ellicum became increasingly tormented about his welfare. He was plagued with doubts and riddled with fear. Where was he? He hunted through his son's uniform, looking for clues to what kind of man Billy had become. Anything. At least you kept writing, son. You didn't stop what you loved. What kind of music could you hear around all this insane slaughter, my boy? I will get someone to play this, Billy. Somehow, people will hear your music. I swear this to you. That morning, Captain Ellicombe's general gave permission for Billy to have a full military burial, even though he was considered an adversary and a traitor. After all, he was also Ellicombe's beloved child. The only request they refused was Ellicombe's petition for a full military band to play a funeral dirge for his son. They told Ellicombe he could choose just one musician. For some reason, Ellicombe chose a bugler. Yes, sir. Can you play this? Sure, sir. What is it? I don't know. My son wrote it. I'm sorry for your loss, sir. Thank you. Taps has become a musical legacy. Not only have those 24 familiar notes become an integral part of military funerals, Billy's haunting and muted melody is now played at dusk.
to signify the end of a soldier's day. This poignant tune forever woven into America's traditions and history. The power of music. The miracle of music.